on uh, decimal and integer operations. Problem number 11 says write and solve an integer expression. So an expression does not include an equal sign. That, that would be an equation to represent this situation. While scuba diving, Dylan dives to a depth of 60 feet, then rises 25 feet, descends 10 feet, then ascends 26 feet. What is Dylan's depth now? Express your answer as an integer value. If we think about um, if you're in the ocean, well, if you're on the if you're on a boat in the ocean, it's my great picture of a sailboat, um, and you're standing on the boat. You might be, let's say, five feet above sea level. And when you dive down into the water, you might be at some depth below sea level, like uh, negative 10 feet. The sea level is 0 feet. Above sea level would be positive, below sea level would be negative. And so when we represent these integer, or when we represent the situation with integer values, we have to keep that in mind. So while scuba diving, Dylan dives to a depth of 60 feet, so that would be negative 60, he's below sea level, then rises 25 feet, so that's an increase of 25 feet, descends 10 feet, so he's, he's diving back down 10 feet, and really what would have been better than um, minus 10 there, even though it means the same thing, would be adding a negative 10. then ascends, that's going back up, 26 feet, so plus 26. Now we know from the homework we did when we were adding, we were finding the sum of integers that I can associate to my advantage because this is a series of addition. And so I could choose to add the negative 60 and the negative 10 for a total of negative 70. And I can add the two positive values, 26 and 25 is 51. Also, since the problem tells us to write and solve, we get a bunch of points just for writing this expression correctly. Now we're doing the solving. So I, I added my two negative values, I added my two positive values. Now negative 70 plus 51. You can just do 70 minus 51. And you get 19. Then you just need to know that since the absolute value of negative 70 is greater than the absolute value of 51, the sum will be negative, so negative 19. Um, and the units would be feet. You could also think of a number line. Let's put zero as a reference. If I'm starting out at negative 70 and I add positive 51, I'm moving to the right. But I'm not moving far enough to the right to get back to the zero. I would need to add 70 to get back to zero. And I would need to add something more than 70 to end up in the positive territory. That's how we know our, our sum is negative. And then it's just the difference between these two that tells you what that negative value is, negative 19 in this case. Problem 12 asks us to name the underlined place value, then round to that place. Um, there's, there's a method for... Hmm, I'm try, just trying to decide how I want to show this. That's okay, I can do it right here. Um, there's a method for reminding yourself of these place values if you don't remember them. What you do is you know the ones place is the it's just the digit just to the left of the decimal point so if you put a one in the ones place and then you put zeros after that one up to the place value you want to name so what do I have here now I have a hundred but since it's since it's less than zero since we're in the we're in the um this is clearly not the hundreds place, right? Because the hundreds place is up here. That's the tens place. <laughs> the hundreds place is up here. If if you're to the right of the decimal, you, you wouldn't call this the hundreds. You'd call this the hundredths. Hundred 
with a THS, hundredths. Okay, and then to round to that place value, you do what's already sort of been started for us. You underline the place value and then you look to the right. Since that uh, digit is five or more, if it is five or more, then we're closer to the next hundredth. And so we round the one up to a two. If it was not, if it was less than five, we would just leave it as a one. But we're going to round up in this case, so 175, 175 and two hundredths would be the rounded value. This digit is to the left, <clears throat> to the left of the decimal, so we could just think about this is the ones place, this is the tens place. So this is the tens. If it were to the right of the decimal, it would be the tenth. This with, with the th. But this is just the tens. And we can round uh, the tens place by looking at the digit to the right. It is five or more. So we round this nine up to a ten. But they, this gets a little bit tricky. So that I can't put a ten. A ten is two digits. I can only put one digit here. So I put the zero and I carry the one, which makes this now a nine. This uh, thousands place is still a one. And then my decimal's right here. So I, I round it to the tens but I still need to show uh, the ones digit, so I put a zero there. So 1,895 and 91 hundredths rounds to 1,900 if you're rounding the tens place. And I wouldn't need that decimal at the end, but I was just showing that why we needed the ones place. Okay, this is the, if we use that, that trick I just taught you, put a one here, zero, zero, zero. So what's that number? A thousand. So this is the thousand with the THS, thousandths place, thousandths. And if you look at the digit to the right of the of the digit in the thousandths place, it's a one. That's not five or more, so you just end your number in the thousandths place and you don't round that seven up. So seven thousandths. Problem number 13. Tia was doing some scrapbooking. She glued the picture with the dimensions shown below. This um, picture of the puppy is 19 and, and a half centimeters by 17 and 3 tenths centimeters in the center of the page with dimensions shown. So this yellow page uh, is 21 and 8 tenths centimeters high, it has a base of 27 and 5 hundredths centimeters. Find the area of the photograph. And then what is the perimeter of the yellow paper background? So this is an exercise in, in calculating perimeter and area of rectangles, but also in making sure you're using the, the correct dimensions for the problem. Um, area of the, of the photograph, it's a rectangular photograph, so area is equal to base multiplied by height. Rectangle is just a special kind of parallelogram. And the base of the rectangular photograph is 19 and 5 tenths. The height of the rectangular photograph is 17 and 3 tenths. So I'm going to do that um, multiplication somewhere on the side. 19 and 5 tenths multiplied by 17 and 3 tenths. When you're multiplying, you don't need to line up your decimals. You really shouldn't. I mean, they, they happen to line up in this case. That's just a coincidence since we have two three-digit numbers and they both end in the tenths place. 5 multiplied by 3 is 15, carry the 1. 9 threes is 27 and 1 is 28, carry the 2. 1 three is 3 and 2 is 5. Cross off the numbers I carried. Now we're multiplying by 7, but we're going to think of it as 7 tens. So I start with a 0 in the ones place. 5 multiplied by 7 is 35, carry the 3. 9 sevens is 63, plus 3 is 66, carry the 6. 1 seven is 7, and 6 is 13. Now we're multiplying by 100, so I start with 0 in the 1, 0 in the 10s. 5 ones is 5, uh, 9 ones is 9, and 1 one is 1. And when I add these, I get a sum of 8 and 5 is 13, carry the 1. 6 and 6 is 12, and 5 is 17, carry the 1. 9 and 3 is 12, and 1 is 13, carry the 1. And 1 and 1 and 1 is 3. So 3, 3, 7, 3, 5. But I was multiplying tenths by tenths, and if you multiply a tenth 
by a tenth, you get one one hundredth. And this is why we need two decimal places in our product. You could also recognize that there's one digit after the decimal in this factor, one digit after the decimal in this factor, so I should have one plus one, or two digits after the decimal in my product. So the um, area of that picture is 337 and 35 hundredths. The dimensions, the the, uh, the dimensions of the base and the height were given in centimeters, so the area would be square centimeters, centimeter square. Just a quick check to make sure that seems reasonable. Instead of 19.5, I could think of 20. Instead of 17.3, I could also think of 20 because I'm just doing a rough estimate. 20 multiplied by 20 is 400. Our answer is in the ballpark of 400. You know, we, we overestimated each of these factors, so that our answer seems that much more reasonable when I consider that. Now, the perimeter of the yellow paper background, background. perimeter is just, there is a formula for perimeter for a, a rectangle, but I don't like to use it since it's specific only to a rectangle. I like to just think of, well, what are the, you know, find the sum of all the edges. Find the sum of all the sides. This is 21.8, so I know this is 21.8. This is 27.05, so I know up here I have another 27.05, referring to this <clears throat> dimension. So I have, uh, I could just do 27.05 plus 27.05, but that's the same as 27.05 doubled plus, this is my perimeter I'm calculating, plus um, 21.8 doubled. You could use mental math. You, you could, you could, you can do 27.05 times 2 on the side if you want to, but 227 is 54 and 5 hundredths doubled is 10 hundredths, which is just 1 tenth. There's 10 hundredths, right? 10 ending in the hundredths place. It's the same as 1 tenth. If I double 20, 21.2, I have <clears throat> this I will do a little bit on the side. If I double 21, not 0 0.2, 21.8, 21 doubled is 42. 8 tenths doubled is 16 tenths, which is just 1 and 6 tenths. So you get 43 and 6 tenths. You could use traditional algorithm for that if it's more comfortable for you, but this is just 43.6. And now we're going to add 54.1. And 43.6. We have to line up the decimals so that we're at, we make sure we're adding like terms. I had, have to add tenths to tenths, holes to holes. I line up the decimal in my sum. 1 and 6 is 7. 4 and 3 is 7. 5 and 4 is 9. So the perimeter of this, of the, uh, not the photograph, the yellow paper background is 97 and 7 tenths centimeters. And since, uh, since each each side of this rectangle, actually I take that back, this side's close to 20, this side's close to 30. Two 30s is 60, and two more 20s is another 40. 60 and 40 is 100. That quick estimate gives me confidence that my, my exact perimeter is reasonable. Okay, I'm in trouble. There we go. Last problem on the test review. Calculate the following uh, metric conversions. We want to go from milliliters to liters, so we're going this way. I'm going to move my decimal 1, 2, 3 to the left. So 56, the decimal is not in sight, it's on the right because that's a whole number. If I move it 1, 2, 3 to the left, I need to fill in the tenths place with a zero. So 56 milliliters is equivalent to 56 thousandths liters, which makes sense because 56 milliliters is, it, there's a thousand milliliters in a liter, so it must be some very small part of a liter if I only have 56. Well, it's at literally 56 thousandths, right? So that's exactly what you see. I'll just use different colors so we can keep track of these separately. Um, if I'm going from kilograms to milligrams, I'm going from kilo to milli, I'm going all the way, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm, I'm going to move the decimal six to the right, the decimal in 12. One, two, three, 
4, 5, 6. So a 12 with 6 zeros, which would be 12 million. And that also makes sense because if I'm going from 12 kilograms is, is very heavy. Milligram, you could barely feel it. So there are a thousand kilo, um, there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram, and then there are 1,000 milligrams in a gram. So there are 1 million milligrams per kilogram. So 12 million is a reasonable answer. For this, this last one, we're going from <clears throat> uh, 25 hundredths kilometers to millimeters. And so actually we're going from kilo to milli again, so it's going to be the same 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right. Um, but this time we're not starting with the whole number, so 0 0.025. And I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the right. So it's going to be 25 with three zeros, 25,000 millimeters. Okay, that completes the test review. Thank you for working so hard to study for your test. Um, I appreciate the effort, and I'll see you in the morning.